Okay. Welcome to this webinar for small um, neighborhoods such as the Huntsinger, Keller, McMurdo um, neighborhoods. Uh, this is brought to you by Clark Conservation District um, and the City of Vancouver. My name is Ashley Smithers. I'm with Clark Conservation District. Uh, we are a non-regulatory agency that works with residents of Clark County, um, providing technical assistance to encourage good stewardships of our environment. And we also put on a number of workshops like the webinar that you guys are joining us today. Um, to check out some of our past webinars, head to our webpage. And at the end of this uh, webinar, we will have a survey. Um, and if you are watching the recording, the survey is on our website as well as it'll be in the YouTube um, links that you can, should see below. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jordan. Thank you so much, Ashley. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Jordan Washington. I work with the City of Vancouver's uh, Stormwater Program. Uh, specifically, I work with our private facilities. It's a, a technical assistance program where I work with property owners, neighborhoods, residents, businesses, uh, to help them better understand their stormwater facilities. Um, and today, this presentation is going to be focused on three particular neighborhoods. This is a small neighbor, neighborhood stormwater maintenance uh, webinar. I'll be covering the specific uh, sites, uh, observations that we saw that are maintenance concerns and best ways of going about uh, getting those facilities back in working order. Um, so without further delay, I'm gonna get back into the presentation um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask it during the presentation. Um, Ashley, our moderator, will take a look at that, and if it's appropriate during the time, um, she will bring it up, or we can save it to the end. Um, but without further ado, let's get started. All right. So first off, what is stormwater? Very basic explanation. Um, any precipitation that falls from the sky, including rain, hail, and snow, is considered stormwater. Very basic, very simple, but it's always good to make sure that we're all speaking about the same thing. And then getting into specifics for the city of Vancouver um, and its requirements. So we have a municipal code that states, owners of private stormwater facilities and systems that collect, convey, and treat, and or infiltrate runoff from private properties are responsible for the operation and maintenance of those facilities. Uh, that is a very wordy way of essentially saying private property owners are responsible for their own drainage areas on their property. Um, this information is usually specified on a recorded plat, short plat, or covenant. Um, if you're in a organization or small development, it might be in some CCR document that you might have received. Um, all maintenance is to comply with state manual or approved site manuals. And the city retains authority to inspect for compliance. So that's another portion of the work that I do. I do inspections of these private facilities to make sure that they're in good working order and um, bring it up with those uh, properties if they are not. All right, so getting into specifics for developed sites. So there's a couple different ways that um, stormwater can be managed on sites. Uh, sometimes it's on a dedicated tract of land or sometimes it's on individual lots. Um, for the specific sites that we're talking about today, uh, these will all kind of be in a shared space or shared driveway space where it drains the private drive since it's not a public roadway. Um, another thing that's important to, um, to point out is that just because there might not be a formal HOA for your neighborhood or street, uh, you still have a shared maintenance responsibility. So um, in that note section on the right side, I highlighted um, the typical wording that you will see in these documents. It'll say stormwater treatment and infiltration facilities have shall be privately maintained. So that's very common wording that you'll see and I'll have the specific wording for each development as I get into it. Um, another thing to note is that these are designed facilities. 
Um, they are designed to specifically treat a, a drainage area. So engineers look over this and will do the calculations to make sure that when there's a large rain event that there's enough storage or enough capacity for um, the property so it will not become flooded and still receive the water quality treatment that it needs. Um, stormwater inspections refer to the approved plans for compliance. So when I go out to a site, I'm looking at these specific plans. I have plans for each site. So if you do not have a copy of this or would like a copy, you can reach out to me. My contact information will be at the end of the presentation. I can send that to you. Um, and another thing, since these are designed facilities, you can't modify the function of these without having, uh, without it being reviewed. So uh, if you decide that you want to change the length of the swale or um, you want to change the slope so that you can have a, a larger yard or more driveway space, that would have to be reviewed by an engineer because it's not the approved plan and it would be a modification of that plan. Uh, with that out of the way, I will get into the specifics of what biofiltration swales are. So for all of the sites I will be reviewing today, they are all biofiltration swales. A biofiltration swale uses grass and other dense plants to filter out sediment and oily materials. As stormwater passes through these plants and uh, through the plants, pollutants are removed through filtration. So typically there will be an outlet pipe or um, in many cases, if it's along a driveway, it will just slope into the swale section. And then at the end, there'll be some sort of inlet structure. So that right photo is a typical inlet grate that you will see uh, where water can go into the groundwater system and move along uh, back into our waterways. All right, so now I'm gonna get into specific sites. Um, the first one is Huntsinger Swale. Um, these photos that are included in the presentation are from my last time uh, doing inspections, and this was earlier in October, so I believe this was October 15th for all the photos uh, this point forward in the presentation. I will go over the specifics of what I saw and what needs to be corrected, as well as reference the specific plans. So. Uh, the maintenance, the primary maintenance concerns um, with this site were the grading and debris accumulation. So for grading, what that essentially means is the current slope is not consistent uh, with the plan and likely does not drain as intended. So um, essentially in this area along the fence line and um, under this tree here, we want to see a, a ditch essentially with a one foot base and slope signs. And uh, over time, what happens is sediments and other sort of debris will start to accumulate in that ditch. And if it's not removed over time, it just fills in. Um, also with this site, um, these are other photos from the site as I get closer to the tree. Um, the fruit tree has been dropping a lot of fruit at this point in the year. And um, these apples, as you can see, have actually covered the catch basin uh, inlet that allows it to get into the groundwater system. Uh, so this is something where we would want to see that removed so you actually have the ability to infiltrate properly. If there were to be a rain event, you would definitely see reduced infiltration and this could cause localized flooding on the streets, which you definitely want to avoid. And um, you know, it's hard for me to gauge, but I'm assuming that uh, the catch basin will probably need a cleaning. If there's that much debris on top, there's all, probably a lot of debris inside. Um, so these are some of the specific things I would like to see with the Hunzinger swale. Um, this uh, slide here refers to the specific uh, plans for the site. Um, if you want a full copy of the plans, I can send this to you. Uh, I just took snapshots of the relevant information. Um, so a brief description of the stormwater facility, just so you know what we're looking at. Uh, the facility is supposed to be 300 feet of roadside um, with 150 of 10 inch perf pipe. Perf pipe is basically um, an infiltration trench that's underground that allows the water to enter the, um, the, the groundwater system, the stormwater to enter the groundwater system. Um, and these are the elements that we want to have maintained. Um, 
as I mentioned before, there's usually specific language that says that you are responsible. In this case, the bile filtration swale and drywall system will be maintained by a new homeowner association and will be financed by annual maintenance and operation fee. In the case that there is no homeowner association, uh, that maintenance obligation still remains. Um, and it is up to the residents to determine how they are likely to proceed with that. So this is just some specific information. Um, this kind of shows a visual diagram as well. Uh, the swale detail where you can see um, the size and dimension of the swale as well as the perf pipe that is underneath it. Moving along, uh, we have the McMurdo swale. So this is another swale system that uh, is along a private driveway. Um, I was out here earlier this month and there was a couple issues that I observed with the swale system. So similar to the first one, there was some grading and debris issues. Um, the current slope is not consistent and likely does not drain as intended. So in the first photo, uh, there's a France truck and uh, it's a little hard to tell with the size, but there's rock pebbles that have been filled in. Um, so basically, um, it looks like it's been adapted to be a partial uh, parking spot, potentially. Um, on the other end of the swale, the field inlet is actually covered and does not allow for drainage. Uh, so that needs to be corrected. And um, in the section that has been filled in by rock, that would need to be removed and the grass would need to be planted. So um, here are other angle shots of that. So here's a better example of how um, the gravel has been filled in or the pebbles have been filled in in the swale. On the other end, the inlet where the water is supposed to infiltrate, there's actually a cover on top of it and a bunch of debris on top. Um, so we would want this to all be um, like that example photo of uh, the swale I had at the beginning where we have um, a consistent layer of grass um, that allows for the drainage of the area. Um, so this is actually wording from uh, the specific plan for the site. It basically says the bioswale is seven feet wide, one foot deep. It gives you the dimensions there. Um, and there's an infiltration trench system uh, underground where the water is disposed of that also needs to be maintained. And in terms of the wording um, that's in the document, it says uh, the bioswale and the infiltration system serving it will be jointly maintained as part of a private driveway maintenance agreement between the three lots. Um, so, uh, you know, if there's not a formal HOA or organization, there is still um, a shared obligation for uh, the stormwater facility, the bioswale, as well as the driveway maintenance. Uh, and here's a highlighted section of what the plan looks like. I highlighted the swale. Um, this is just the plan view and it's something that I refer to when looking at the site. Um, we want the base of the swale to be one foot, so that's highlighted in the lower right hand corner. Um, there's a standard bioswale grass seed mix that should be used. Um, I can give further information on that, but like I said, it's just kind of like a lawn grass um, that you would have um, should be in place. And it also highlights where the infiltration trench is, as well as the clean out for that. All right, so the final, um, the final dedicated swale we have um, color swale. Uh, there's a few maintenance concerns here, uh, mainly being that um, there's a culvert that goes under the driveway. Um, the swale actually goes across the driveway section. Uh, the inlet is buried um, as well as the drywall. Uh, improper grading on the west side of the driveway, so it doesn't have the, the right capacity and uh, the drywall needs to be inspected and likely cleaned. Um, so this is showing the west side of the driveway. Basically, it's a flat area which should have a similar slope to the other side and will be shown in greater detail on the plans. Uh, this is the plan for the site. It shows that there's a culvert um, that goes under the driveway. 
Um, it mentions in the plan that stormwater facilities is to be privately maintained by home by homeowners association. It also shows where the dry well is located. Um, so this will help you uh, communicate this uh, with a contractor or for reference if you are going to be self-performing maintenance. Um, getting into self-performing maintenance, um, here are some general tips for dealing with uh, stormwater maintenance. First off, you want to have a routine maintenance plan. Um, if you have the basics, uh, if you have a, a regular schedule where you're mowing your grass, uh, removing small amounts of sediment, um, it makes things easier in the long run and you don't have to do larger maintenance projects. You want to keep records of your maintenance and inspection. So if you do a leaf cleaning to remove leaf litter at a certain time of year, it helps to uh, maintain a log of these events. That way, if I go out to look at a facility and have concerns, you can reference, well, I was out there last week, last month doing this activity. We cleaned the dry well three months ago. Uh, it's good to have that as a reference document. And we have um, a template on our website um, that will be included at the end. Uh, you want to know who is managing maintenance. So if you have a specific person within the community or neighborhood that is going to be spearheading it, know who that person is. Are you hiring a landscaper that's going to be managing the site? You want to know who that is. Um, you know, if there's confusion on who is responsible and who's managing maintenance, then it's likely not getting done. And uh, it's also good to have a copy of the approved plans for reference. This is something that you can refer to or refer contractors to to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to for the site. Um, and I mentioned it earlier, if you do not have a copy of the approved plans, I um, have copies of it um, for most private facility sites. Um, and I do have it for the three sites listed tonight. I can get those over to you. Um, Getting into uh, coordination, um, there's a couple different ways you can coordinate among other residents and homeowners. Uh, the one method I typically recommend is working with a property manager um, to determine the logistics. Sometimes it helps have uh, someone who's familiar with creating budgets and having uh, reserves done to figure out how much money needs to be set aside for handling routine maintenance. Um, that being said, you do not necessarily need to go the property manager route and not all, uh, not all developments choose to go that route. Um, another thing that I've seen done um, is just an agreement to split maintenance costs. So um, if you're all, if, if you share drainages with three or four other people, maybe you can just all get together and agree that you'll hire a contractor and then you'll split the cost evenly. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, you can also uh, maintain your respective area. This is another option. Um, this is not one I typically recommend just because um, if one person chooses not to maintain their section of a swale, uh, and it gets into disrepair, uh, that still makes the whole facility out of compliance. So if one section is in poor shape, that means the whole facility has an issue. And as mentioned before, you have a shared maintenance responsibility. So all of you, every, every member would be um, responsible for maintaining that. And um, the last option there is you can self-perform maintenance. Uh, you know, like I, like I said, with um, routine maintenance, there's a lot of tasks that you can do yourself that aren't necessarily something that you need to hire a contractor. It's a, um, it can be something where you just do little things here and there, and uh, it can help a long way. So um, getting into that, um, a lot of routine swell maintenance can be self-performed. Um, but if you do not want to go that route, you can also just work with a typical landscape provider. Uh, most landscape providers are going to be familiar with swales and stormwater facilities. Um, but just communicate with them if you're going to hire a landscaper, what those specific needs 
uh, that you have are. Uh, that way it's properly maintained. Uh, but here's a list of some of the activities that you can do uh, self-performing wise. Um, mowing, you need to do some regular mowing with uh, the grasses. You don't want it to get above six to 10 inches. Beyond that, uh, it becomes an issue and hard to maintain. Uh, planting and receding, so uh, if sections of the swale uh, start to die or uh, you notice sections where the grass isn't growing, uh, you can plant new seeds yourself uh, to make sure that the vegetation is sufficient. Uh, weeding is a big one. Um, uh, blackberry in particular can be very common in facilities, so it helps to uh, just pull it out when it's small and easy before it gets into a big uh, nasty thicket. And uh, sediment and debris removal. Um, like I said, uh, a driveway uh, is going to accumulate material on it and when it rains, it will drain into your stormwater facility and swale. And um, it's easier to start to remove sediment as it accumulates than to wait for it to fill in all the way. Um, that's a lot more labor and effort uh, to get it back to its original state. Um, that being said, there are some contractor recommended activities that should be done. Um, anything that involves going underground or into a manhole, you should go through a contractor. Um, confined space entry should not be done by any sort of residence. Uh, you want to train professional uh, for safety reasons. Um, with dry wells, uh, there's going to be sediment accumulation over time, and if it gets over 60% full, you're going to want to have that uh, debris vacuumed out, um, and that's going to require uh, special factoring equipment. Uh, so that's not something that a resident could just do on their own. And another thing that I recommend uh, contractors for is for larger rehab. So if there are significant grading issues where it's not going to be something that you can just dig, re dig the ditch yourself, uh, it's better to go through a contractor. If there's broken structures, so if there's pipes that are broken underground or have root intrusions, you're going to want a contractor to do that because you're not going to have the equipment for that. And same things, uh, same thing with clearing culverts that might go under driveways. Yeah, so like I was saying, not all maintenance can be self-performed. Know when to rely on stormwater professionals. Uh, and lastly, um, the, the biggest thing I, I like to remind residents is you want to stop pollution early. Uh, the earlier that you can prevent things from entering systems, the easier the maintenance is. So um, if there are catch basins on your street, uh, it helps to routinely clean those. Um, it's the first stop before it goes into the rest of the system and they have their own uh, sediment trap and accumulation bins. So if you maintain that section really well, you're going to have less stuff accumulate in your swale or further down the line. Um, you want to schedule parking lot sweepings or uh, driveway sweepings to make sure that material is not going into your facility. And you really want to do inspections after any large storm events. Um, after a large storm, uh, a lot of debris and water can go through a system, and you want to make sure things are still operating correctly and that the latest storm didn't create a new blockage or uh, bring in a bunch of debris that now uh, makes it so the facility just doesn't operate as intended. Um, and spill cleanup, this is something I, I, I definitely recommend to uh, be mindful of, especially with uh, personal vehicles. You know, there's all sorts of oils and motor spills that you can have. It's always handy to have some kitty litter. It's a great absorbent. Um, so if you're working on your own personal vehicle or um, have an issue where there's leaking transmission or something like that, you can just sprinkle a little kitty litter on top of that. It'll absorb the material and then you can just sweep that up and throw it in the trash. Um, but that's all the material that I have for you. Um, I will stick around for specific questions. I can go back over things into more detail. Um, Ashley is going to come back in and uh, we can see uh, what we need to focus on. 
Hey, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I have a couple of questions. So um, kind of a two-parter, but just kind of for people that need additional assistance, um, you know, where they can find that if that's, if there is any like financial or technical assistance offered. Um, and then kind of to add on to that, is there a company or references for someone to call to get cost estimates and whatnot for doing any sort of work? Sure. So uh, for the Southwest Washington region, we do have a stormwater contractor list. Um, that list is available on stormwaterpartners.com. Uh, uh, they have a maintenance list on their website. Um, and I'm happy to send that information to you directly. So uh, the reference email on this page, and I believe my personal reference might be mentioned somewhere in the webinar details. Mm -hmm. um, you can message me directly and I can get you that contractor list. Um, not all of them do the same thing. Some of them are more focused on underground um, facilities, but if you just explain that, hey, I have a swale and we need to have it regraded, um, they can tell you if that's something that they have the capacity for. Typically, landscaping companies, that's something that they would be able to do. Um, was there another part of that question? I think that's it. And I just put a link to the Stormwater Partners uh, website um, in the chat box, and I can also include that in a resource page. Um, there was another question. Well, there was one more that just came in, but I'm going to try to get to this other question first. Who, who do we contact to clean out the pipes at the end of the swale? And I believe this person might be from McMurdo. Yeah, so I, I looked at the participants earlier on and I did notice that um, it looks like Allie and Kyle, uh, you're both from McMurdo. Um, yeah, so for that, you would want to contact, like, um, like I said, on the contact list, it has uh, specific people that work with stormwater systems. Um, you would say that you have an underground system that you would want to have uh, cleaned out or inspected and they would be able to tell you if they are capable of doing that work or not. Um, and like I said, there's probably maybe like 20 companies listed on there. So I would just call maybe two or three. Um, it helps to get a different bid from the companies just so you know that you're getting um, a good price or um, the best deal that you can. So, um, yeah. Excellent. So then um, Kyle asked, when I bought my house, there was already a tree planted with a swale already covered up with rocks. Has This has been in this condition for most likely many, many years. Is there a paper that I have to sign to take responsibility for maintenance of this swamps or even um, my knowledge of its existence? Sure. So. Um... This is not uncommon in the city of Vancouver where, you know, the state of certain facilities have been that way for a while. And uh, maybe when you purchase the home or move into um, that residence, you're unaware of that being a stormwater facility that needs to be maintained and it may not have been maintained before you were moved in. Um, so our private facility program um, it really uh, got started in 2016 uh, in terms of having um, an actual person in my role going out to facilities and inspecting those. Um, that being said, the terminology and the responsibility has been there since the development was put in. Um, there just might not have been someone that had been able to go around and check every site. So that's why there's kind of this discrepancy between okay, well, you know, before I moved in, it was like this, why wasn't it maintained beforehand? It's just, we didn't have the capacity for someone to go out and inspect every site within the city of Vancouver. And it's one of those things where we're catching up with it now um, and alerting people of the maintenance issues and to uh, start getting those addressed. 
Um, like I said, our program is primarily technical assistance. We're not trying to do some sort of gotcha thing where, you know, I go by your site and notice that it's not working properly and like smack you with a fine. That's not how we do things. Uh, we primarily speak with residents, let them know that these are facilities that uh, drain uh, their properties essentially because there's the potential for um, environmental concerns and then there's also uh, flooding concerns as well if they're not maintained. So if we get a large storm event like a hundred year storm, um, you want to make sure that uh, the drainage drainages are functioning proper, properly. So you don't get issues with your house or where you live. Uh, I think you muted yourself, Ashley. I did, I did. Um, uh, I think that's all the questions that we have, unless we have any um, others that wanna come in quickly. Um, I just wanna remind people that uh, there will be a survey that will pop up afterwards um, and I can put a survey link in as well to the chat box. Um, but make sure to fill out that survey. We will also do a follow up email. Um, and if you're watching the web recording of this to check out that survey in the link um, as well as um, uh, look for the resource page on the Clark Conservation District's page for Jordan's information uh, to follow up with any other questions. Um, and then also, Jordan, will we be, we'll be having another um, kind of one of these correct uh, for you to maybe talk more with participants and like have more question and answer time if people are interested, is that correct? Right. Um, so I, I will be uh, creating an office hours uh, time slot where you can come in and just ask questions and we can talk one on one or if you have specific specific questions, we can talk in that format. Um, my contact information is also listed. So if you want to contact me by e via email or uh, by phone, that's also perfectly acceptable. Um, I would say with the sites that I've mentioned today that the first Step will be speaking with your neighbors um, and uh, talking about the maintenance needs. Uh, make sure everyone's on the same page and then you can decide which route you would like to proceed down. If you want to work with a property manager, if you want to just split the costs. Um, once everyone has been contacted, then you can figure out where you need to go from there. Um, but if you need assistance with that pro process, feel free to contact me and I will do what I can on my end. Excellent. Um, and yeah, and just a reminder that this is going to be recorded and on our website. And so that's another great uh, way to um, share with your neighbors um, uh, this recording. And I think um, unless I have any other questions, I think we're going to go ahead and end early tonight. So um, thank you, everybody for attending. Um, and Jordan, any last words? <laughs> I think that covers it. Thank you so much for uh, hosting, Ashley, and uh, thanks for joining tonight and asking questions. Thank you, everybody.